There have been probably hundreds of proposals for how to restore the city and dozens of credible plans looked at over at least 30 years. So this is at least a three decade process in, in talking about the Salton Sea and how to restore it. I mean, you could go back all the way back to the 1930s the people realized that there was a problem and, and that the salinity was going to rise to a point that it wouldn't work anymore. And we're now at that point. The, the last time that this uh, process of considering plans was, was seriously looked at was uh, back in 2006, 2007. State of California was charged to come up with a preferred alternative for restoration of the Salton Sea. In 2007, they did come up with such an alternative. The price tag on it back in 2007 was $8.9 billion, with a B. And shortly thereafter, the economy collapsed. So there has been zero progress toward funding any plan like that. And at this point, uh, we're now several years down the road and even that alternative, not only is it not funded, it's probably not even feasible at this point. So right now there's another process of evaluating ideas going forward, um, but there is no one plan at this time. The cost of what we're gonna do is clearly a, a driving factor of this entire discussion. The state's plan of $9 billion in a, in a dam like Hoover Dam across the middle is way more than we could ever find in the way of funding for this project. Uh, so we have to come up with something more reasonable uh, in, in scope and cost. We think there's some options out there that will work, but we have to really uh, continue to look at how large a, a, a sea, a recreational facility we could maintain, both because of the cost of, of a bigger barrier or a smaller barrier, the amount of water that will be available short term. Uh, and long term after the settlement agreement kicks in, uh, finding the mix for all of that and getting to a point where we can say, here's plan X that we have finally settled on, here's plan Y of how we're going to fund it, and the two match up, let's move forward. That's my goal, is to get to that point soon. The, the Salton Sea really does have a lot to offer. If you take a short trip into history back into the, say the 1960s, for example, at that time the water quality was much better than it is now. And uh, the Salton Sea supported uh, not just the fish that are in there now, but, but sport fish uh, that, that people would love to come out here and, and fish for. There were boating races and, and um, <clears throat> sailing and all kinds of things going on. The people would come by the thousands from Los Angeles and other surrounding areas to spend the winter here. In the winter time, we have very nice weather, and it's it's a place that people like to come. So when I was young, we used to go picnic out at Red Hill every uh, Sunday, and uh, my dad used to water ski in it. Um, I would like to see that happen again, and some of those um, some of those activities are still occurring. So it's not that rare. You could you could actually still see it happening. If you look back to the 50s and 60s when the water quality was good, there were more visitors here than there were in Yosemite in a season. Back in the 60s, um, the Salton Sea was, um, if you will, mapped out. There was about, I want to say something like 14 or 15 tentative maps that were approved by the County of Imperial. There are um, 26,000 yeah, entitled lots. I was going to say 26,000 <laughs> entitled lots out there that you can go and build on today. If you'd like, I'd love to see that. Um, uh, eventually, I'd love to see 26,000 uh, lots out there built on and, and create an environment out there uh, for people to enjoy the Salton Sea. And as you drive back to the Salton Sea, if you're on 86 and you look over to the right, at any time of the day you look out there and it's an absolutely gorgeous sea. And I drive by there quite often. I, I still marvel at it. The other thing I, I, I think that we, we really have to consider is the, the environment. Not only are we going to recreate on it, but we need to maintain that area for Pacific Flyway purposes. We have to do that. I mean, I think we have a, not only a moral obligation to do that, 
but just a simple fundamental obligation as a community to try to maintain that sea um, for uh, waterfowl and, and everything else that's down there, the fish and, and uh, you know, um, anything that, that is currently there or that can be there. This place can once again um, support a very productive tourism um, outlet. There are a lot of people that live around the sea. There are a lot of um, our local foods are grown around the sea. A lot of our winter vegetables because of the climate. It's very productive and it has a ton of potential for renewable energy. It's sitting on um, the San Andreas Fault. It's a place where there is always lots and lots of power just below the surface in heat energy. And all of these things combined um, make it a very special place in the world. And it has a, a tremendous amount of potential. Uh, one of the nice things is the Salton Sea has one of the best geothermal energy resources in the world. And it's only about 10 to 20 percent exploited. In other words, you could go five or even, perhaps even 10 times uh, more energy than what's currently getting it uh, pulled out of there. So we're using some of that geothermal energy to distill salt and sea water. Additionally, we're starting a project to use solar energy to distill salt and sea water. And that does work with high salinity bodies of water like the salt and sea. It's very simple in principle. If you take a, a pot of seawater and you put it in your teapot and you put it on the stove, the steam coming off of that water is very, very pure. So what we're doing is essentially boiling water and collecting the steam that's coming off at very high purity, better than bottled water. There is a feasibility study, financial feasibility study that is being done right now. It's two parts. By the end of May of this year, the National uh, Renewable Laboratory out of Colorado will have a report on the energy uh, development and, and what that value is. And then a year from now, a complete economic feasibility uh, of the sea and it will include commercial and residential development and what that actual dollar is. So that um, whatever uh, configuration that we come up with, we will know that that energy development, that energy cluster and infrastructure that we could uh, develop in the South End, the, um, the wildlife habitats that draw tourism, um, and then the recreation, open water, hunting and uh, fishing, all that activity has value um, and managed appropriately it should pay for itself and that's what we're hoping to see so the full report won't be done until May of 2016 but the energy portion will be done this May